the land of magicians, of the best workmanship and best architects in this stunning landscape. An ancient truth, yes, but what lies as its current reality is something else. The country is currently in difficulty from the financial crisis it's not coming out of. The inflation rate has been around 30% for several months now. There's been another rise in fuel prices which could worsen that inflation and poverty. It's an aggravating factor and not the only one for street kids, given the mistreatment and domestic violence to which they're submitted. So the worrying economic situation could easily make things worse for them. The empire now faces immense poverty and resource scarcity. This fight amongst people for scarce resources makes them vulnerable at first and then makes them violent, especially taking out on the young ones and the new entrants into the country. Children in this country face various kinds of violence, ranging from domestic violence to violence on the streets. This manifests itself into three types of violence, emotional violence, physical violence, and sexual violence. Many children in Egypt face abuse by those who are supposed to protect and nurture them. There is a difference in behavior in terms of violence in different parts of the country. Violence is considered as the most common form of discipline by sources of authority, particularly teachers and parents, where religious leaders support this idea as part of guiding children to what they believe is the correct path. Much for your report. A professor suggesting the extermination, killing these street children, it just seems inhuman. Was this an actual serious proposition that he was coming out with? And I wonder how other people reacted on hearing that. It is true that these street kids are very badly perceived in Egypt. We were stopped several times while we were filming by ordinary passers-by who stopped Shaima, the main person in the report. They insulted her, they attacked her, saying, why did you let them film you? You're giving a really bad impression of Egypt. We saw children beaten, being called thieves and so on. So it's certainly true that not only do they have difficult lives, they're really not perceived well by the population at large. It's shocking. The extent of violence is gender-specific. In Hathor's country, where she was worshipped as the goddess of fertility, motherhood and pleasure, now has the highest rate of female genital mutilation, making it the most painful day of a girl's life, for non-medical reasons, to deprive her of pleasure, causing her biological harm. United Nations High Commissioner's Office for Refugees is the main body handling concerns for child refugees. NGOs and private players like Save the Children and SAMU Social are trying to help vulnerable and homeless street children and trying to instill cooperation and brotherhood in them through creative techniques like music and art. Two, three. <laughs> The singing helps their behaviour. It helps them to work with one another and to remove any selfish tendencies they might have. However, most NGOs exempt themselves from resolving child refugee problems as there is no internal committee or policy to support it. Violent disciplinary methods are getting normalised and people are getting desensitised. Political policies need to come into practice through a nation and worldwide media coverage so that families gain worldwide social support to raise the next generation of Egypt.